Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to give you a heads up. First Light is gonna be having a whitetail week uh, this coming week, October 2nd through the 8th. So make sure you head over to firstlight.com and check that out. They're gonna be running some good deals, a lot of sales, um, up to 40% off a lot of the whitetail gear that we uh, live in most of the year. So head over to whitetail week at firstlight.com next week and take advantage of the sale. It is the 22nd of September today. JP and I are doing our trail camera tour right now, getting all the cameras out here in Iowa, and then uh, jumping over to Illinois to do cameras there. And then we'll probably head back up to North Dakota to keep hunting sometime mid next week. We're on what I consider to be the main farm here right now. Last year, we buried some four by four posts out in the field here, so this year, I'm actually going to cut down a tree and uh, wire it right to that post. I think it'll last a little bit longer. I think it'll get a little bit, little bit more activity. So we got two of them to install on this farm. We're getting all the cameras out today and uh, got a couple other farms to head over to after we're done here. So we're going to get moving. We're up in the North Valley of this property right now. I've had some really good hunts here over the years. Stands right up here over my shoulder. Kind of scrape vine. I've had this here for a few years, but there's a really nasty ditch that kind of pinches all the movement out of this bedding area and that bedding area right through here. So we just threw a camera up, put some uh, branch butter on the vine, and now we wait. We just got out to our second mock scrape tree. This one's right by the cage blind. This is actually where we were hoping to shoot mini mag last year, but we just couldn't get him to come over here and hit it. He kept cruising that other edge and hitting the scrapes over there. So we're putting a full size tree on it this year, see if that makes a difference. As you can see what's left from last year, and they're already pawing it out, so. I just end up leaving that there. I'm assuming it's got pretty good scent on it. We're gonna strap this tree up, throw a camera, and see what happens. Well, we got the final scrape tree installed. We went ahead and just wired it right to this post I used last year to run branches off. Cut down a small oak that's probably 10 to 12 feet tall and just wired it right to it. They said they were already pawing at the ground out here where I had the old branch. But this should be pretty slick. A lot of these deer come off the neighbors from the west heading this way. Having this out in the open gives them a reason to kind of stop by. It's only about 20 yards from the cage. If we can get the right buck doing it, should be money. another permission farm. Actually, I call this the river bottom piece. All the way on the west end of it, there's a pretty good sized river that runs through. And then the landowner owns, I think it's 160 acres, but it's all crop field. On the north end of it, there's a shelter belt. And then there's kind of this little island that comes out in the middle of it. And like I said, a little bit along the river. I've been running cameras in here for probably the last eight years, six, eight years, something like that. And I've never really had anything that made me excited to hunt it, but I threw one Moultrie in here this summer along this uh, tree line, and I've got two different videos of a giant, typical. Uh, he's a six by six. His one side is probably 90 inches. His other side's a little smaller, but it's still really big. But uh, standing corn on the neighbors, 
beans on the property I can hunt. And like I said, we're dealing with a shelter belt and a little bit along the river in this island. But uh, like I said, I've had this camera here for a month and a half, two months, and I've got two different times where he's came by it um, about three weeks ago and probably four weeks ago. So don't have a ton of faith, but it's he's definitely a possibility. He's in the area somewhere, and he's big. So Mike named him Holy Mackerel. So hopefully we can uh, pick this deer up on camera and hunt him this fall. start till probably one this afternoon and I think we have I don't know somewhere between right around 25 cameras out here in Iowa got all of our farms done tomorrow we're gonna head to Illinois and do the lease there hopefully um, if not tomorrow we're gonna get to it Sunday so that is gonna be a wrap on tour day cams here in Iowa we are set up ready to rock and roll a couple weeks out from season here begins October 1 so Pretty good feeling. We gonna now we just sit back and wait, let the pictures roll in, and uh, see what we got to chase this fall. It's 23rd of September. JP and I uh, got all our cameras out in Iowa yesterday. Uh, we rolled over to Illinois here this morning. Just got to the lease. Um, we are gonna litter the farm with uh, cell cams today. This farm is uh, pretty solid. Um, we haven't been in here since the food plots popped up, so we're excited to kind of drive around, check out the whole property, and, and get cameras up. And then uh, we won't be back until it's time to hunt. It's time being back since uh, the water hole install. Unfortunately, our, we were having connectivity issues with our cell cam, so we didn't get any pictures. We brought uh, different cameras today with a different provider, so excited to see there ain't a ton of tracks around it but there are a few and uh, the landowner came in here and topped these off with water so it's just a matter of time before these deer just start pounding these I think got done setting up a another mock scrape this isn't a brand new spot we haven't hunted this spot exactly um, last year when Brendan was hunting we had a big eight pointer we were chasing um, for say a good solid week we had eyes on him bad part about it was he ended up getting hit by a car but the reason I'm saying it is he hung right in this general area for a whole day and we watched him just hot on a doe all day long from the pond stand. So what we did this spring, we came in here, we hung a double set river's edge right over my shoulder here. It's all CRP pretty much all the way around us. And we have a mowed trail coming from the creek ditch, which is over this hill. Comes out of there, comes across CRP, right down through here, out to the egg field. So just a natural funnel when we mow these trails. So what we did, we came in, Set this mock scrape up at least, hopefully get those bucks to stop here for a little bit. If they do, for 15, 16 yards from the tree, should be game over. So that's kind of the thought process there, but uh, slowly but surely we're getting these cameras out. We're excited just to finally get intel since it's coming on the end of September and the season opens October 1, so we're going to keep moving and keep getting cameras out. Got back in here by the second water hole. Again, the landowner was generous enough to come in and, and fill these for us. It looks awesome. A lot of deer sign around it. Um, we're really excited about this spot. Uh, this 
actually pretty much right where my buck was standing last year when I shot him. He come up out of this ditch here and was circling to chase a doe and shot him right here. But we got a lot of really good bedding here to the west of us. That's kind of our, our sanctuary that we don't really step foot in. We are talking about going and throwing a cell cam right in the middle of it right now though. And it'll be a camera that'll stay until the end of the season. If it dies, we ain't gonna go in and mess with it. But that's the plan. Both of these water holes look money. We've got a few more uh, scrape trees that we are gonna install here yet today. Handful of cameras to put up. But uh, so far everything's looking good. The landowner, I just hopped on the tractor with him and we went around and brush hogged a bunch of access trails. Um, main purpose of them is us getting around and not leaving a lot of ground scent but uh, obviously we also structured them kind of funnel deer how we want them to move past tree stands so got that all taken care of as um, soon as we finish here today everything's gonna be ready to rock and uh, just be a matter of watching the cameras and waiting for a good buck to show up hopefully we are hanging our last camera of the day um, down in one of our kind of hidey hole food plots right here in front of the stand that we're calling the Taj Mahal. Um, we sat in this spot a handful of times last year uh, just because we were able to keep the windows closed and contain our scent from what we could tell. Um, we had deer come from every direction and kept those windows closed and didn't have any issues with it. So last year we ran a scrape vine on the other side of this food plot, but there is a tree right in the middle of the plot. So we moved the vine over to this tree just put a post in the ground here and we're going to slap a camera on it um, but everything's looking pretty good down here uh, we just cruised across another plot seen quite a few uh, fresh rubs we're excited to see what's in here so slap this camera up and uh, be on our way all right it's a little after five o'clock here we just got set up in the tree would have liked to have got in here maybe i don't know 20 30 minutes sooner but we had to run some errands in town but we're in here. I think we're in a good spot. We put a camera out right where we're sitting here a few weeks ago. Um, it's a non-cellular Moultrie camera, and uh, so we're not really sure what's what's coming through here. But there's a couple pretty good trails that come through. This is kind of on the, the far end of where this wood points out, and then there's another another chunk of woods here um, to the southeast of us. Um, we got probably about two hours 45 minutes two and a half hours somewhere around there daylight left so hopefully we can run into some deer tonight try and get some try and do some management here so Six fifteen right now. We had an interesting turn of events here. Um, about forty-five minutes ago, we had Grandma and Grandpa come through on their on their uh, motorbikes. Thought they were just going for a nice evening stroll. They came out, parked here about 75, 80 yards from us. Kind of stood around for a little while, and they kept going. Thought they were going to be leaving and they went about another 100 yards and parked the bike again and decided to bring out the pistols and start doing some target shooting <laughs> right in the city limits so that was pretty awesome um, they sat here for probably a half hour and shot probably 150 200 rounds 
and now they just headed out. So we got a little over an hour of daylight here. Hopefully things will calm down and some deer will come moving through here, but I'm sure that doesn't help the cause. Should have set up right where those guys were shooting. shooting actually earlier. They were working the edge of this uh, wood line up to us. I thought it was going to work out perfect. They had to probably about 100 yards and for some reason they just went back up in the woods. We haven't seen them since. It's been probably 5-10 minutes since we've last seen them. So I don't know there's not a lot of woods there, so they're either going to come through here or they come back and went the other way. But, uh, it's going to be pretty much, pretty much a wrap on our, our first night here. It was kind of an interesting first sit, um, but at least we've seen some deer.